Thank you. Well, the topic of uh, today's session is the digital disruptor, disruptors in China. We could interpret disruptors from two aspects, from a consumer's perspective. I think you have such a kind of feeling that uh, the interactive relations between people, between the people and the machine, as well as uh, the channels between the businesses and uh, consumers are changing rapidly. Well, from the industry's perspective, we are thinking it is a kind of disruption of the technology over the uh, traditional economy. No, actually, it is a kind of a reorganization, emerging and upgrading, as well as the imagination about the future, about uh, the uh, traditional economy with the help of the digital technology. So, what does this digitalized world impact the world. I think this is the topic of this session. We're going to talk about this topic from these two aspects. First of all, let's start from Mr. Xu Jinghong. We know that Premier Hu Keqiang talked about Internet Plus as well as the popular entrepreneurship and innovation survey as the new driving forces for the new economy. So from this point, what do you think about the policy bonus for the, this innovation in China? Well, I do not want to use dianfu in Chinese or disruption to illustrate this phenomenon. I prefer the word of upgrading. Digital technology or internet economy is the most revolutionary technology in the history of human beings, bringing great changes to the way of, people, of people's lively, lifestyle as well as the way business operations. As you mentioned, China is in the new phase of innovation, or as you said, hard wave. I do not want to use the word hard wave. You know, innovation is the constant, uh, ongoing process. I hope that innovation could become a new normal. Well, the government policy is giving a lot of boost to current innovation and entrepreneurship. The service which is encouraging and boost the uh, uh, innovation and popular entrepreneurship is really uh, never seen before. You will see a batch of uh, the uh, incubators uh, mushrooming in uh, Zhongguancun village. So I think there will be a lot of uh, you know, new vitality injected into the new economy with the help of the policy. Speaking about the hard wave, I think uh, I will come to Rang Cao. I think you're quite familiar with both China and the States, to be specific, the Silicon Valley. As the previous speaker mentioned, Constant innovation is important. So what is the driving force for a constant innovation in Silicon Valley? According to the Orange IT survey last year, the newly founded uh, enterprises uh, accounted for about 46% uh, of the total you know, internet companies. That is to say, every day we're going to have C7 you know, in innovation startups, but we also say a couple of uh, companies are dying every day. So how to make this innovation a constant phenomenon? So what is your observation? For the startups or venture uh, fund, actually, we take the a uh, view of uh, more than 10 years in designing and making strategy. We keep a long view 
uh, aspect. I think the people working in the Silicon Valley is adopting a long-term view. The market, well, here in China, market is uh, big, sufficient, is sufficiently big, and uh, also the scale of the market is there. I think it will be a lot fun for these startups. They have a lot of things that interest them. Of course, you will see. You have to keep in mind the business cycle into consideration. But uh, looking back uh, over the past one decade, many startups was uh, established when the market was not that strong. I think there will be there will be a lot of opportunities for them to grapple with at that time. So what is the driving force for the constant innovation in Silicon Valley? And what about China? How could we identify these driving forces so as to make the innovation here constant? I can give an example. For example, the purpose of those uh, uh, startups. In the Silicon Valley, the values that the startups wanted to create for the society will be the uh, common response to this question. Well, here in China, they are talking about dreams. They want to bring their dreams coming true. That is uh, for the entrepreneurs themselves. On the other hand, the policies, bonus, there are a lot of uh, policies encouraging innovation and the startups. We will see the uh, the first startups and also the second, even the third uh, times uh, startups. So there are a lot of uh, very benign ecological environment for these startups. Innovation culture, innovation spirit are also important for those entrepreneurs and innovators. The young people born after 1980s or 1985 they were familiar with the internet. They had a broad horizon thanks to the internet. internet. And also, in terms of the culture, there is a quite uh, you know, tolerant uh, environment for these young people to start their business. So from this perspective, I'm quite optimistic that this innovation is constant. Richard, we are concerned about the new emerging market. BCG has a report which is related to internet. That is to say, employment represents the trend of uh, in, uh, startups or the entrepreneurship. That represents the trend of the innovation. So what is your take about that? We're witnessing I think we're witnessing a remarkable change happening in China right now that is different and in many ways more powerful than what's happening in, in other parts of the world. And I say that because I think what Ron said is exactly right, that in a place like the United States, when you add the internet and a digital mobile world, you're adding it to an existing service infrastructure which was already highly developed so that you could still add more value. You could make lives easier for people, you could do something. But in a sense, most people were pretty well served to begin with, with the existing infrastructure that existed in the economy. I think here in China, because the internet, and now increasingly mobile, has come along in parallel, not behind, but in parallel with the service economy, we're actually seeing it open up people's dreams. Because in many places, you can't get access to, if you're in a small city or a village, you can't get access to the kind of products that you want. The kind of service infrastructure, whether it's retail, healthcare, banking, mm -hmm. those just aren't as developed in a way that can serve small businesses trying to get capital to grow or consumers that are looking to access products that are quality in an easy way. And so I think that right now, What's happening here and the kind of innovation here is much more transformative to people's lives and has the potential to touch, touch very broad parts of the economy. So to your question, China will have, give or take, $320 billion of growth this year. Enormous growth on consumption. So massive consumption growth. Half of that growth will come online. 
half of it. It's a much higher percentage than in other parts of the world. And it really reflects the way that mobile and the internet are touching people's lives in a more fundamental way. I was talking to one of the other participants here. They were talking about the fact that the, that the Alibaba platform is probably creating 8 million jobs when you look across the entire ecosystem that it represents. Mm. I mean, those elements are really quite quite substantial in, in touching the economy. And I, and I think we're going to see that continue to play out in a way that's not just following another part of the world, but often leading in the kinds of services that are being created and the impact in the broader economy. Yes, you are right. So transformation and upgrading of the economy and its impact on the livelihood of the people here in China. I totally agree with you on your comments. And uh, Mr. Zhang Tao, I think uh, you may have the same take. You know, Zhang Tao actually is one of the earliest, uh, you know, e-commerce uh, pioneers. Uh, so you've experienced a lot over the past uh, 10 decades. So the Chinese people uh, really love good f and delicious food, and uh, you're very good to provide a platform so as people could have access to food. Would you share with, with us your observation? Yeah. Well, in China, there will be a combination between the internet and uh, economy I can take the Dianping as example. I think there is a, one of the major reasons is that people love food. Chinese people love food. And the Chinese people, you know, have the habit to dine out. You know, they have more chances and uh, to dine out compared to, for example, American people. Well, China's uh, uh, dietary experience is uh, to die out uh, even every day. So this is a kind of uh, uh, culture, food culture here in China. That's why Dianping was given birth uh, 12 years ago. We also watched uh, uh, closely about Groupon and uh, similar you know, uh, companies in the States. Well, actually, uh, you will see a greater number of such a kind of uh, online businesses here in China. Actually, uh, we had uh, a greater number of uh, uh, booking, uh, you know, through our platform compared to the, uh, our counterparts in the States. With internet developing at such a stage, you will see an increasing combination of uh, internet with traditional businesses. And uh, there will be different and uh, a variety of business models that has been undertaken, adopted, and our company has uh, taken a different uh, business model compared to Uber. Mr. Chen, please. Yes, indeed. Not only in China, but in the whole world, we found the boom of uh, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, business creating. Many sectors will have access to the new technologies and uh, they will experience fundamental changes. I think this heat way, um, this hot wave is just like uh, the industrialization, uh, the first industrial revolution or the second industrial revolution. Now China is no longer isolated from this round of industrial revolution. At the start, the Chinese companies were lagging behind. They were just uh, imitating the business models in other countries. More and more, we found that from the mobile internet and the O2O, 
Chinese companies have demonstrated more vitality, and uh, I believe that in this round of uh, the internet wave, the Oriental world, in particular China, is now once again taking the lead. We can find quite a lot of features. For instance, uh, we ha we now have uh, the innovation by the general mass, and uh, in DD, originally we only had an ideal. We only had the vision. We don't know what is going to happen. There are not many uh, limitations, and we can try. Then, for three years after this latest round of uh, financing, we now have uh, a scale of uh, 15 billion US dollars. So you can see that this is a unique or quite an outstanding feature of this round of uh, the hot wave. We can use new technologies to integrate the existing services. Yes, indeed, we found a lot of small boats in this big sea. For those small boats, some of them are driving towards a very promising future. They have very good teams, and uh, they are strongly supported by the back offices. In DD, I also witnessed uh, your rapid growth in the past two years, and uh, you have also ushered in some new challenges to the taxi sector. Starting from 2012, if I remember, now three years have passed. Together with your team, how have you dealt with the various challenges like uh, financing, like the media pressure and uh, the severe competition? Well, we found there was very fierce competition, and now you are integrated. Yes. The competition is always fierce. Severe competition might not always be a bad thing. Sometimes when you have smooth traffic, you may find that actually this is not the correct way leading you to the destination for innovation and uh, for entrepreneurship. If you take uh, us like a small boat, you will always have uh, the various challenges internally and externally. Take the boat uh, as an example again. The boat is going to grow. And uh, the challenges faced by a big ship are definitely different from that of a small ship, a small boat. Now we can see that uh, many companies are actually lived up to the uh, difficulties. They survived the difficulties. And uh, finally, uh, they prospered by gaining more resources. But in times of good, they may actually face with, be faced with another, uh, other, other challenges. So resources is only a means to deal with the difficulties. You may have other um, tools or you may have other capabilities to deal with the various challenges. So in times of, uh, in hard times, we always encourage the team to sustain, to hold on. And when we gain the resources, we have to guard against the potential pitfalls. We have to keep alert. We have to uh, make good use of the resources. So when we have uh, more financing, uh, we become to worry about whether we can use them efficiently. Yes, indeed. In Tsinghua, we are always encouraging uh, entrepreneurship. However, we always also emphasize that being, enter being an entrepreneur, you should always um, be clear of your targets and you should always do things that you are good at, and you should persist. Creating a business 
is really a long and a lonely journey. For the young generation, please do not take it as something easy. You have to find your value, create your value, and、uh, persist in your core value. Yes, persistence is really important for O to O. It is particularly、uh, necessary. For O to O businesses, they have attracted a lot of investment, but it is really not easy to sustain the business. So, Mr. Zhang, could you please share with us your take on that? I really agree with the previous speaker or previous、uh, panelist. Well, persistence is the key word, and you have to. Understand that you have to go through the hardship. Well, sometimes it may not always be hardship. You know,、uh, in our business,、uh, the team was fond of、uh, food, and、uh, we have、uh, the passion. We have the enthusiasm. We wish to help the consumers to identify their preferred、uh, food. And also, we want to facilitate the various restaurants and businesses to find their customers or consumers. That's why we have、uh, sustained. That's why we have、uh, persisted. In China, we found that there are many business founders. They are passionate, but they are not clear. About what they want to achieve. Sometimes、um, they may feel that now、um, they have the money and、uh, they can retire. I think you need to appreciate the social value you are creating, your business is creating, and continue to create such value. Now we have O two O. We have、uh, Internet Plus.、Um, for O two O, we now say call it as O two O version two. Well, we can see that、uh, the society is changing. Now、uh, you have to have a very clear understanding of the middle class and、uh, of the whole society. Before you create your business or before you、uh, start your business, back in two thousand and three, the number of the middle class, a number of、uh, the population of middle class, was only、uh, dozens of a million. But anyway, we、uh, we were saying that we were lucky that we started in two thousand and three, because. Prior to 2003, the middle class in China was even smaller. Now、uh, we survive, and I believe that it is the passion and the enthusiasm that we have that have、uh, supported us. Yes, indeed, demand driven is the key word. Now、uh, we are we have talked about、um, the startups and、uh, the. Companies, how can they grow? So I have the question for Rich. For the big companies, in this round of、uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, how can they deal with the various challenges? Enormous! It's an enormous challenge for big companies right now. In part,、uh, what、uh, Cheng Wei was saying a few minutes ago, that having the money isn't necessarily having the capability to be able to do this. And that, and we see in a lot of our work right now that companies have an aspiration to be a stronger participant in the digital world, but they're missing a few elements to be able to do it. One is they tend to come at it not from the standpoint of the attacker, but they come at it from the standpoint of the incumbent. So they're focused on what they're protecting versus taking more risk and really going for it. I think second. There's an adaptive mindset that you see in the disruptive players, the ability to keep changing and evolving their models and learning as they go and trying new things. 
Big companies tend to have very slow decision processes. Things take a long time. They go up three or four layers, they come back down. It takes too long. And then the third is we've gone from a world that's a very hardware-oriented world to a very software-oriented world. And yet most big companies, the capabilities they've built are mostly in the hardware side, the physical, you know, what they produce, how they physically distribute it. And building those software, that software mindset, that software capability is a very big gap. And so when we're collaborating with our digital ventures business or with our traditional consulting practice, it's often about how do you bring the attacker mindset, how do you change the model, either keep it outside of the core business or change the decision cycles to be able to go at a faster pace, and how do you embed more of a software analytics sort of mindset into the core business that's often not there. And sometimes companies can do that on their own. Oftentimes, it's where they want to partner, partner with entrepreneurs who have the capabilities, partners with others. It's some of the things that we do in our work. But, but I, I think that that's, that's going to be one of the biggest challenges. And, and just to build one last point, a lot of this discussion has focused on the disruption as it relates to the consumption part, yeah. sort of fulfilling the China dream and the opportunities. But China is the world's biggest and most powerful manufacturer. And the changes that are coming inside traditional manufacturing are as revolutionary, at least, as the changes that are coming on the consumption and service side of the economy. And we're in a world where um, robotics, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, advanced analytics, these elements are going to change the shop floor, the supply chain, the, the, the innovation to production model that exists. And I think that the disruption potential is at least as high in that world. And um, the consumption, the services, these things have the most potential to change the China dream here. But embracing uh, the manufacturing 2025 vision that the government has talked about, really pushing hard to take even very uncomfortable change, but pushing very hard to make China at the leading edge of that, is very important for China's place in the overall world, given how how important manufacturing is to the economy here. Yes, indeed. For the China 2025, uh, manufacturing uh, China 2025, there was a, a lot of uh, policy approaches or proposed, and uh, for the um, recently, there is a strong interest in the German industry 4.0 version 4.0. It is supported by big data and uh, the artificial intelligence, and also uh, providing personalized products to the people. So, how can we accelerate China's innovation? The buzzword these days is about uh, big data, internet, but as a matter of fact, what internet brings to this society? What, what is that in nature? Internet as a revolutionary technology will bring changes to relations between people to people, people to goods, and uh, facilitate this kind of change between and among all these changes and to make this kind of relations open so as to you know uh, bring down the barriers but uh, on the other hand for example the water is still the water and the food is still the food like the uh, pancakes which is the traditional Chinese food so for the food, you have to be delicious in, uh, delicious in the first place. So, of course, with the help of the Internet, you can promote it and market it in a more efficient way. But uh, first of all, the food has to be delicious in the first place. It is also true for service. The service shall be good quality. The service shall be something that is the most needed by the people. And number uh, th uh, three is the the cost shall be, uh, you know, accepted, uh, affordable for the businesses, and also the delivery of the services and the product should be efficient. I think uh, this 
is the core of the Internet uh, Plus. We shall not uh, just, uh, you know, regard the Internet Plus as a slogan, as the lip word. We have to think about the nature or essence of Internet Plus. Actually, there are other technologies, as Richard mentioned, intelligent technology, biological and uh, astronautics-related technologies. They are all, you know, changing the world jointly. In talking about the application of Internet, well, actually, China is leading the world. I visited the States, and I had a feeling that uh, the application of the Internet uh, in the field of width and uh, the depth, uh, China is leading the world. But China needs also to improve itself in applying this technology to various uh, uh, industries. For example, the integrated circuit industries, environmental protection industries, and other industries will have to bring a better, uh, you know, we have to, you know, have a more uh, technological innovation to combine this good technology with this industry. So we have to have a more in-depth uh, research and development. I'm very happy to tell you that uh, there are a lot of uh, very satisfying development in this field. Several uh, days ago, there is a kind of uh, innovation award ceremony where you have seen a lot of uh, new technologies. So I think. Another key word, innovation, entrepreneurship, innovation shall be well uh, combined in the future. And a run from the mass entrepreneurship and innovation from the technology perspective. Are there any uh, differences in terms of the innovation and uh, R&D in the innovation? I quite agree. On that, uh, Dianping, uh, I'm one of the uh, board member of Dianping. I had a talk with our partners. Uh, so what is your future target of scale of the company? Open Table, Groupon, a large in scale. But compared to them, I think I think that Zhong uh, Dianping is uh, of the same size. But uh, we are not happy with that. We hope that uh, we could scale up further. I want to tell you that um, you know, uh, in uh, the history, we always follow the steps of the, the of the United States. Uh, but now the things are changing. The consumers are. Uh, either paying, you know, the payment online, and to trust, to utilize the internet, to do a lot of, to accept a lot of, enjoy a lot of uh, services, and this will continue. So the investment for to be in the to be actually is not that, uh, uh, you know, mm, popular. But I think uh, we will see a lot of uh, uh, things happening there. Uh, there will be a new types of, uh, you know, platforms coming up in the future. For IT, the cloud, the security issue. Well, the technicians or the talents are uh, sufficient enough to ensure those security-related products of international class. You all mentioned about the combination of internet plus the traditional economy, so as to bring uh, values to their inner uh, ability of innovation of this traditional economy. We haven't seen uh, a quite uh, mature business model. Uh, not many, I have to say that um, the efficient combination of the two. I take an uh, education example. For these years, there were a lot of innovation, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, you know, investment in education, but uh, we haven't seen any mature or revolutionary business model which will actually uh, bring us to a more constant 
uh, future. So what is uh, the barriers uh, there, for example, in education? Well, I think it depends on the time, because we're used to traditional education system two years ago. Uh, university, uh, Tsinghua University Holding Company launched uh, an online platform. Within these two years, about uh, 3 million students learn from this online platform. Well, Tsinghua University have 204 years of history, uh, trained about 190,000 graduates. Well, over the past the two years, it has, you know, uh, bring about uh, Three million, uh, you know, online learners, and every week you will see an, in, a new number of about ten thousand new learners through the internet. That is to say, that is a re revolutionary. That is a in each and every corner of the society, the students could access those masters through the online learning platform. We. Uh, our platform is one of the three best uh, e-learning platforms, according to MOOCs. Actually, we are uh, extending the learning, the education, uh, you know, to the two extremes, including K-12, K-16. If uh, 100 million plus learners could enjoy e-learning through this platform, then that will be a that will be, be great. My son, uh, born uh, after the year of 19, uh, uh, 1990s, 90% uh, 90 of the knowledge is are uh, captured through the internet. So I think it is not the education industry system itself uh, that matters. I think the most important thing is time. I think with time going on, this new thing will be accepted by more people. Question is framed correctly in that we haven't yet arrived at what are the right models for a number of parts of the economy mm. and, and the society, and education would certainly be among them. But I would, I would just emphasize how important digital technologies can be to providing education in the years ahead. And I think there's a lot of discussion about income inequality around the world, here in China, but, but around the world, in the United States as much as anywhere. Um, there, digital is one of the ways to close inequality gaps right now, and particularly in education and in health. And that what's being offered online um, uh, the Tsinghua's platform, Coursera's platform. I mean, we're touching millions and millions of, of students, often who would have no opportunity to access the caliber of education they can get at the top universities around the world and opening up the world to them. We're, do, we're doing work with the World Economic Forum right now, which has really taken on this agenda in a very big way, and what is the digital potential in education. And I would say there is so much experimentation and learning going on around the world in a range of markets, in Africa, as well as here, as well as you know the developed markets, and showing that some of the potential is the way the digital directly can uh, offer opportunities to students, you know, through courses. But some of it is also how do we empower teachers. In many parts of the world, some of the best things you can do is help teachers be more effective right. at delivering their material, at understanding, at supplementing what they offer for very strong students or very weak students. And so I think we're in a high learning mode, but the potential here to make a huge difference for, for tens of millions of lives is quite substantial. <laughs> Yes, I, I quite agree with you. This is the reality at present. Uh, just now, Jing Hong mentioned that uh, students or the young people uh, born after 1990s and 2000 are actually adopting a very different way of learning through the e-learning platform. Your companies. So from the management perspective, how do you manage these young people born after 1990s and 2000? Uh, so are there any difficulties in managing them? Well, that is a quite a sudden issue. I have to uh, make a clarification. Yesterday marks the third anniversary of uh, DD company. 
and we change the name to DD Travel instead of DD Taxi Service. Let me share with you my observation 10 years ago. Internet was uh, uh, down, uh, evaluated, but uh, under evaluated, but now Internet is over uh, valued. Ho some holds that uh, Internet uh, can do everything. Well, actually, like a WeChat, uh, uh, and also the cloud computing, and people and uh, food could be combined uh, thanks to this kind of uh, in Internet Plus. Well, the spirit of Internet, and also the uh, care for the customer's experience that Internet could provide, uh, also very important. These years, Internet is uh, overvalued. Valued. But we have to think about uh, the uh, uh, practical value that Internet uh, could bring. So the Internet uh, companies uh, will be doing some su substantial down-to-earth work. And they have to do some substantial work to combine the technology with the traditional economy. This is one point. Second, Chinese businesses and Chinese customers should be more confident. Customarily in the past, we think that um, a lot of uh, those internet uh, things or copying things and uh, startups or entrepreneurs here in China uh, are blindly, you know, admiring uh, their counterparts in the States. But we have to keep in mind China has the largest market. And we have our pattern in place already, which will help us to make a leapfrog uh, forward uh, dimping, which is different from Groupon uh, and other counterparts in other states. So mass entrepreneurship, mass innovation, will enable our local startups to be more confident. I was born after 1980s. How to communicate with those born after 1990s? Well, personally, most important thing, well, our company is pretty young, and our staff is uh, 28 years old on average. Our CTO is, uh, was born in 1983. And also, we have uh, some engineers and uh, great designers or who uh, were, you know, were born after 1985. They have their dream. Uh, they are free-minded, and uh, they are encouraged to try everything new, uh, to try something uh, to resolve the, the pressing uh, problems. I think we need also to have a quite a liberal platform to encourage them to open up and to find out solutions with, you know, very agile kind of uh, environment. But uh, on the other hand, we are unexperienced because they are young, they are not mature, they are lacking of experience. So they need the advice of some senior staff. Mm. So our financial system, the, uh, uh, the, the relations with the government, well, actually is something that we focus so that we could make our success sustainable. Internet actually will reach each and every industry, but uh, we have to think about uh, which comes first, which comes next. We may enter into some industries and then come to other industries later. Well, in the very beginning, some industries uh, are not, uh, you know, the first choice for these startup or internet companies, but later on, they will figure out some ways that will better efficiently address that. The same is true with education. Just like Columbus finally discovered the new continent, so for education, for Tsinghua Holdings, if you find the breakthroughs, I'm sure you will usher in a new world. So, uh, Mr. Zhang, do you have any uh, sector to explore? Any f new fields to explore? Well, I believe that in the future, we will have uh, more and more sectors which are 
well integrated with the internet technologies. Now we have uh, Didi and uh, Dianping. They are well reported by the media. But now we have uh, the Internet Plus. We have the online education materials and uh, uh, websites. They are changing the education sector. People feel that uh, those online education websites are actually quite influential. So I guess gradually to be successful, you need to be good at the offline business. And then add it on with uh, the internet technologies, uh, you will, survive, uh, you will su be successful. So the traditional sectors can make full use of uh, the internet technology and uh, they can uh, gain growth by using the internet technologies. For us, uh, we want to make our lives better. That's why uh, we, focus, we focused the first on the food and the dining, and uh, gradually we expanded the business. Uh, we have added on the uh, hairstyling, traveling, and I guess in the future, well, we can move on uh, or we can expand further, and uh, we can include uh, education and other sectors. So I will expect a lot of growth in the coming years. For every sector, I don't think uh, it will go downward. As for the young generations, I'm very confident in them. My son is, was born after 2000. He is 11 years old, and uh, he has already written an English book of 50 pages. And I found that he knows quite a lot more than me. And he's only a teenager. I could hardly imagine how I was when I was only about 10 years old. We have a lot of business founders who are really the Y generation. And not long ago, I ran into a young businessman, and he was only in his 30s. So I believe that the young generation or um, the Generation Y will live better than us. My strongest feeling is that 10 years ago, when we talked about entrepreneurship, um, we would be daunted right after the uh, college graduation. But now you can see that we have uh, many successful business founders who created their businesses when they were still college students. So I guess that in the coming future, uh, we would have uh, the successful business people who are only at their 20s. So for people like me, who is at about uh, the 40s, no investor would be interested in us. For employees, for the 60s and the 70s generation, they were driven by the sense of responsibility. For the um, 80s and the 90s uh, generation, uh, they, were, they will be driven by um, their dreams and uh, their passion. Well, because of the time constraint, we may have to uh, come to the conclusion part of our discussion. So just now, uh, our panelists mentioned that Internet Plus will become an outdated term in the future. And uh, we're going to have a new beautiful world. It might be a little bit harder than the existing one, but it will surely be um, interesting and full of fun. Now we have uh, 10 remaining minutes. I would like to solicit comments or questions from the floor. Please tell us your name and uh, ask questions very briefly. Lady first. I'm from 
uh, self media. Thank you very much for sharing with me uh, your observations concerning the disrupting uh, business. For disrupting, I believe that uh, disruption can also occur in terms of uh, the um, companies or the services to the companies. And also, uh, what about the companies? Are they ready to take the challenges put forward by such disruption forces? Well, for both the government and the institutions who are dedicated to innovation and uh, business creation for Tsinghua Holdings. We are operating our company and also we have uh, dozens of uh, incubation, incubation parks throughout the country. In terms of uh, the support to the uh, B2C business, we are making the effort and uh, in the future, I believe that we will need companies like Didi and uh, Dianping, but we will also need companies like Huawei. And these companies can have a lot of interactions. And this world is actually indeed an interactive ro world. I believe that our mutual cooperation and uh, mutual uh, integration will surely be the future. The gentleman. I'm a journalist. My question is for Mr. Chen. Uh, yesterday, uh, it was uh, said that uh, Didi is going was going to have some new business uh, for the city buses, and uh, how much you are going to invest in this new business? Well, our goal is to build a one-stop uh, traveling brand. We want to facilitate uh, people's travels, and we wish to maximize or optimize the ways uh, you travel or you commune. In the future, we believe that uh, we can, we will have uh, more products uh, like uh, uh, DD, which has the reservation or booking, and uh, then uh, you can travel. So uh, we can have uh, similar or such uh, new businesses. Also, you may have uh, some isolated or sporadic uh, needs and uh, demand or niche requirement. For instance, I'm a business person, and uh, I may temporarily travel to a particular city, and uh, I need the vehicle or to go uh, through the traffic. And this cost uh, will be a, will be different from uh, taking a regular bus. Now, in DD, eighty percent of the taxi drivers are still active drivers. And in the future, we wish to develop businesses like city buses. Also, uh, we wish that with our cooperation with the new energy-driven uh, buses, uh, we can tap the market and explore the potential. New energy uh, is available now. However, they should be popularized. Uh, they should. Uh, to be first, to business first, and then to consumer later. Um, actually, for many families, they may not be uh, so sensitive uh, to the price fluctuations of the petrol. But for companies like uh, DD and also taxi drivers, they are quite sensitive to such uh, price changes. So yes, indeed, uh, we are cooperating with Yutong. As for the investment, 300,000 US dollars. How are we going to spend them? Just uh, investing on our new business.
Um, my name is Han Weiwen. Thank you for your sharing. I'm sure everybody uh, agrees that um, there is such uh, integration, and uh, uh, we do find more uh, close cooperation and uh, integration between the real economy and the virtual economy. So uh, are you expecting uh, more close collaboration between the two? Well, for, for such uh, merge or integration, I believe they will become a system, an ecosystem. For the 2C part, in the past years, uh, we were more involved in the software-oriented businesses. And uh, uh, we've also invested in uh, the catering industry, especially in terms of the supply chain for the catering industry. For the merge and the integration, we expect uh, such integration would be uh, a step further and uh, there will be more links and uh, we will also uh, cooperate more closely with uh, the various links. Uh, for example, we are now cooperating uh, with companies or um, the supply suppliers, and also uh, we will have strategically and uh, in terms of the capital, there will be more cooperation. I believe this will be um, actually, the most important thing for DD. For in the past, uh, we focused on the internet technology, and now in the coming future, uh, we will expand our offline competitiveness. So uh, we have uh, the horizontal and uh, vertical integration. In the past, if you say that we are, we were a platform, and then in the future we would hope ourselves to be a, a vertical integrator. The opportunity to talk to CEOs of larger companies, both in China and around the world, and I would say this issue is at like the top of the list in so many sectors, in banking, in insurance, in manufacturers, in retailers, and how to create a more digitally adept company and how to build the right links and partners to be able to um, win in the economy and win in their sectors in the years ahead. So I do expect to see a lot of digital capabilities flowing into sectors that traditionally were quite distant from them, and that will be both what companies do on their own, but also their partnerships with, with entrepreneurs and others. Uh, one last question. Good morning. I'm an entrepreneur, but also a consultant. So my question is for uh, Rich. Digitalization has impacted the whole world. For consulting firms, they used to serve the major businesses, the big companies. Then in the future, how are you going to serve the small businesses? Or if you can share with us your advice. Thank you. So I, I think... Um Part of what's happening in our world is the need to be able to take on different kinds of capabilities to help clients move at a much faster pace and in a world where you need much more agility. And I, so for us, that's been about creating a digital ventures business that can actually work with our clients to build businesses, often partner with small entrepreneurs that bring specific technologies that wouldn't know how to reach the big companies and get to the right level, but actually can be extremely complementary to the platforms and embedded customer bases of big companies. So I think a lot of our world, a lot of our world is still helping companies transform to win in, in the environment, but the digital part is a bigger and bigger share, and our ability to help companies rewire themselves 
build new businesses, connect to the entrepreneurial world, and therefore help entrepreneurs who have great ideas figure out where their technologies can be applied in big companies. I think that's an increasingly part of what we do day to day, and I think that will only grow in the years ahead. Uh, a company that we are v investing has just uh, going public. They are just uh, serving, especially these uh, small companies. Five billion kind of uh, valuation service and uh, service and consultancy combined to provide to their customers. Thank you for everyone for your sharing. We hope that we could uh, see more values created by the digital technology. I want to want our want our uh, you know panelists to please stay on this on the platform for several minutes okay thank you